Welcome to episode 39 of the Unstoppable Podcast with Dallas Michael Sear. My name is Dan J. Gregory, and I am committed to hunting down the secrets of business mastery and human performance. My goal for the Unstoppable Podcast is to share insights from some of the most successful entrepreneurs, inspiring thought leaders, world-class athletes, and prominent celebrities to help you to become unstoppable in business and life. Each week, I'll be bringing you a new interview with an inspiring person and sharing my own results as I pursue the answers to the question, how can I create the ultimate edge in my business, make a significant impact, and live an extraordinary life? Welcome to episode 39 of the Unstoppable Podcast. Where has the week gone? How is it Thursday already? On Monday's show, I shared seven principles for succeeding with greater ease based upon my own personal journey of discovery and my pursuit for a greater balance and flow in my life and my business. Today's guest is perfectly timed as he expands upon some of the key concepts that I shared earlier in this week in our deep conversation today. Today's guest is Dallas Michael Sear. Dallas is a speaker, transformational life guide, conscious business coach, spoken word artist, and the founder of Ignite Purpose, a unique life and business coaching program for those looking to give up their small, unfulfilled, common lives to ignite their purpose, live their passion, love their life, and make an impact. In today's show, you will discover Dallas's incredible story of going from mess to success and adversity to abundance, from being bankrupt emotionally, financially, and spiritually, to now living an extraordinary life of passion, purpose, and fun. He's built three businesses, and for the past seven years, he's been helping his clients to eliminate negative patterns, heal broken relationships, start and resurrect businesses, and live extraordinary lives. In this episode, you will discover who you are here to be and how to find your passion and discover deeper fulfillment. Get ready to ignite your purpose today with Mr. Dallas Michael Sear. Dennis, welcome to the Unstoppable Podcast. Are you ready to unleash today, my man? I very much am. I've, I've already unleashed before we even got on the phone. <laughs> me too. Me too. I, was pumped, I was pumping. I was rocking out this Eminem before the show. And I was, uh, nice. just kept fired up, bouncing around how I always do to get set up for the show. So big welcome to the show. Um, would you mind sharing a bit of a frame about uh, who you are and what you do and how you come into what you're doing right now? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I am, um, I am a, a, a life coach, although I'm not, I don't love the term, but it's definitely for SEO purposes. Um, <laughs> and, and for, and for it, because it is becoming more of a popular term, you know, when, when I first started, um, and when I first hired my first life coach, I was in Connecticut and this was almost 14 years ago. Nobody knew what the hell a life coach yeah. was. You know, the term was not popular. It's still plenty of people on the East coast do not know the term. Um, uh, and less so back then. So I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the word either. Um, I, I like coaching, but it, 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 there's nothing wrong with it. It's just in what I do, I feel like this, the strength that I have is helping people really discover their soul's divine purpose. Um, I don't believe that we're all here for one single thing, but understanding the underlining true gifts and talents that you have and the reason that you're, you know, some of the reason why you're here so that you live from that place is massive. It was transformational for me when I discovered that for myself. So being a life guide, guiding people um, to their soul's divine purpose and, and to a deeper understanding of who they are and what they're here to, to accomplish um, and, and who they're here to be, not so much as do, but who they're here to be that is ultimately what, what I do. Amazing. So, so Dallas, you touched upon the fact that you came across your first uh, experience of coaching back 14 years ago. Would you, would you give us um, some background in terms of how you came into this world of coaching and a little bit about your journey and how, how you came into this world? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, for me, I was, you know, I grew up pretty poor and, and uh, there was a point where I was, so I was 19 years old, j- had just graduated high school and I actually uh, got a job in retail because I didn't want to go, I didn't want to go to college. I had no clue what I was going to do with my life. Um, living in a crappy apartment with my mom um, in the hood, uh, affectionately I call it the hood. It was, yeah. it's pr- pretty ghetto. I mean, I, I loved where I grew up. Like I was one of 
five white people in probably a 20 mile radius, but I loved it. Didn't know any difference. You know, that was just my experience. So it was perfect and beautiful. Hip hop was my culture and my life. And then I got a high school and it was like, oh, I guess I need to get a job and grow up. And I don't know what my next step is. And my parents hadn't gone to college and got a retail job, eventually got fired from that. I think less than seven months later for stealing, um, was, was, on, was on unemployment. Luckily they didn't actually catch me. They kind of knew I was stealing, but didn't catch me. So they just, you know, let me go. And, and actually I think they, yeah, they, they let me go. And at first, for, however it was, I was able to collect unemployment, which was like, I think maybe 300 bucks a week, if that, yeah. and living in a, in a, apartment with my mom and just well, I spent 13 hours a day watching TV smoking cigarettes having just 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 depressed and miserable and I created a collage fast forward 20 years and the movie the secret comes out and everybody knows what a vision board is but 20 years prior nobody knew what a vision board is it hadn't existed yet but I created what I called a, just a collage to inspire me and motivate me and just help me change my attitude. I just knew it was crappy. So I created a bunch of photos of parts of my life that I like actually liked and enjoyed, inspiring words, people I looked up to, places I wanted to go, you know, and, and uh, just it, exactly what we kind of know a vision board to be today. And um, yeah, it, it worked crazy enough. I hung that up. I tore everything else down off of the walls in my bedroom, hung that thing up. And uh, a week later, I got an interview at an insurance company, failed the aptitude test to get hired, but the woman said I was so well-mannered that she decided to have me back to retake the test. Um, I improved in results just enough to get a crappy data entry job at an insurance company. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more money than I had been used to making, and fortunately, the woman there, this manager, she was awesome. We just hit it off. She loved me. Um and she was a former army Joe sergeant, thought I was the cutest thing fucking ever, and we just got along so well. She helped me climb up the ladder till I couldn't climb anymore. Nice. Um, yeah, just, so I just kept going. So from there, I went from data entry to a pretty decent, you know, five figure corporate job until I just couldn't take doing the work anymore. I was miserable. And uh, so if you've ever been stuck doing something, you know, just for a salary and we're just miserable, like in a box and the work was mundane, then you can relate to my life at that point. I can definitely relate to that. I, uh, I spent yeah. eight, eight years in, in financial services. Yeah. And, oh, cool. You know, oh, that, you'll yeah. love the next step of my story then. That's great. <laughs> Because I went from the insurance company, finally I just uh, couldn't take it anymore. I started I started going to night school in order to get a degree just so I could have some direction in life and was going to school for business management. But I couldn't wait till I got the degree to actually get out of my department and no one would hire me anywhere else in the in the, in the the uh, company until I had a degree. So I put my resume on monster.com, which I don't even know if that exists anymore. It's been so long since I've been self-employed. I'm not even sure if monster or career builder or any of that shit exists anymore. But my point is I put the resume out there and New York Life, this big insurance company, scooped me up because I, I had a particular license to help me make – to help make me a better um, – customer service rep in the call center that I was in at the insurance company. And that license made me um, a perfect you know, uh, person to start building a financial practice, which I had no idea that that was the case. I just did it so I would get a raise at the company I was at. And um, But it set me up perfectly, man. The New York Life come, came and scooped me up and they gave me an opportunity to become a financial advisor and build my own practice. So for the next seven years, I built that practice, and I did actually pretty well. For the first four years, I worked my ass off, and for those of you who don't know, in financial services, unfortunately, it's kind of like you know you could be a FedEx driver and get fired, and then go you know sell life insurance at at New York Life. That's <laughs> just the truth. In fact, right. one of the one of the best life insurance salesmen in my office at the time. Literally had done that and failed the test, I think, four times before passing to sell life insurance. Previously, he was a FedEx driver. Amazing person, by the way. But just I, just to show you, most people think you've got to have this ma this incredible background and all these you know all these licenses and, and that just was not the case. I had a couple of licenses and and was you know I was just good at what I did because I was I was good at building relationships and good at hustling and. I just showed up, you know, I showed up and I did what I had to do and started building a financial practice. And it was four years later 
after hitting like my number one goal, working my ass off, being on this all expense paid trip with my uh, girlfriend, that she was in the bathroom getting ready. I was on the balcony of this five star resort looking out, getting ready for dinner. And I'm just sitting there kind of taking in the moment. And I think to myself, I did it. Just feeling amazing, like on cloud nine and, and knowing it could only it could only get better. And then the very next thought in my brain was, Oh fuck, now what? Hmm. And then I just it was crazy how I had been rushing so working so hard and rushing so much from thing to thing, distraction to distraction, event to event, uh, sale to sale, that there was never any space in my life at that time, zero space in my life for me to actually pay attention and hear what was going on internally. As soon as I had that space, even just for a millisecond, it was amazing the awareness rushed in. I had the thought, now what? After having the most amazing feeling in my body that I had done something magnificent, which really wasn't all that grand at the, at the time, but it felt like it was. And friggin' the very next thing, I just spiraled into depression, realizing that the girl in the bathroom was not the one I wanted to be with. And we were f- friends at best. She was more like a sister, which was, uh, you know, gross if you think about it. But, uh, <laughs> but basically what I'm saying is we didn't have any sexual attraction. My friends were awesome, great people. I had been friends with them for like 16 years, but we were just going in different directions. We just appreciated, liked different things. You know, things I was starting to get into, they weren't. And so we did we had less and less in common. Um, you know, although I was doing okay financially, it wasn't where I wanted to be or expected to be. And it was so hard. At the time, I thought it, it just, everything was fucking so hard. Like it was... It was a struggle to get up. It was a struggle to get on the phone and make the calls. It was a struggle. Everything was hard and heavy. And I and because I was running at such a speed, I didn't recognize any of this. Once I did, I just ended up feeling so disconnected from my life and recognized that what I was doing wasn't really bringing me any joy and I just didn't want to do it anymore. It's crazy. I mean, I, I had I had a very similar experience, and mm. just just speaking to, just hearing you speak, it put mm-hmm. me in, in the moment of it when, it all back. when I was there. And it's Stop. true, you end up in some <laughs> kind of like war. You're in like a warp. Yeah. It, yeah, you get so involved, you don't even stop to breathe and look around you. You know, I remember working like eight till eight, like really pushing it. That heavy, hard feeling. You don't until you get that moment where you can just have that clarity and see. You know, step out. It's like. If you held your head underwater for too long, you're going to freaking drown. Whereas once you put your head up above the water, you can breathe again. You're like, <gasps> and then it sounds like you had that moment where you're able to breathe and all of a sudden see that what, where, what was I doing in that warp? This is not who I am. Right. Totally. Yeah. It, that's it. A hundred percent. And, and the other thing is, is like making everything external. So you're in that warp. And for me at the time, everything was externalized. It was about the car, the girlfriend. It was about, you know, the, the suits and how much money I was making and, and what, what the, and, and what the next level was. So I was in, I was playing the game of achievement and externalizing everything. And, you know, I I can tell whoever is listening, if, if you're in that game or, um, or, or think somehow anything external in your life is going to be the solution. You know, it, it's not. Period. Period. Hate to hate to bust your bubble. <laughs> so, so in, from from those moments, then we had that moment of, of of clarity, and that you wanted to make the change, and you know, you realized these circumstances that you'd created weren't weren't you know weren't lighting you up. They weren't fulfilling you. The external yeah. was just um, kind of a, a reflection of where you were. Mm-hmm. What what changed from, from that moment? Oh, things got massively worse. Wow. Yeah. Oh, it it got so ugly. Holy shit, man. It's it's awesome as I think back and like now I can think back and like laugh at it. Amazing how bad it got. The I, so here's the irony. I had already hired a life coach to help me cuz I thought the person that it was was that I had hired not already at the time that I had this epiphany. Shortly after when things started to spiral down, I hired a life coach because I'm I'm the type of person when I when I recognize something isn't working, I can't just keep faking my way through it. You know, it, it, my my background was tough growing up as a kid. We didn't have a lot of money, but one thing that I that just came natural to me because my parents allowed me, um, it, it, ma- mainly they allowed me because they didn't really parent me. That's that's kind of the truth. But but still, it it opened up a space for me just to kind of 
figure things out on my own and just do what felt good, you know? And so I stumbled into hip hop and, and I was a B-boy and a graffiti artist and a, and a, a battle MC. And all of those things allowed for real self-expression. Like just to do what felt good, what was authentically me and and not to be in my head and, and, and really to be in my body and to kind of be an artist, you know, for, for the most part and a, and a performer. And so I bring that up because it, it was I, – I was naturally someone who could live from an authentic place and express myself authentically and kind of trust my gut. Those are those are things that kind of that, – that came intuitive at an at early age. And so it's, I guess it's one of the, the, the blessings of being left to kind of fend for yourself and have no real guidance or parents. You know, there I had friends, but I didn't have anyone really parenting me. Mm. So um, because of that, I, was, I, was, I lived from a very raw, authentic place. That was my experience. That's one thing about the hip-hop culture is, you know, there are, of course there are a few folks here and there kind of faking it and, and pretending to be something that they're not that's everywhere. But for the most part, the group I was hanging around with was very, just raw, real, authentic. And so when I recognized I was no longer doing that and how far I had gotten from being just me, I couldn't do it anymore. Mm. I stopped working. I just started playing golf all the time. <laughs> Um, I slept till noon. I would go into the office at, at kind of off hours, hoping to not see people, um, and, and, you know, kind of a, avoiding people. I wouldn't call, I wouldn't make calls for sales anymore and, or a lot less anyway, unless I had to, yeah. um, if clients didn't call me with like, Hey, I've got a rollover. I've got a big check. What should I do with it? Like I didn't work. I basically didn't work. My expenses continued. My office continued. My assistant continued. My life expenses continued. So once all of my all, all my savings were burnt out and I and I was spending more than my renewals were coming in, I just charged it. If I couldn't afford it, I charged it. So I went seriously into credit card debt. Yeah. Um, I friggin' was scrambling uh, out of like out of uh, desperation to try and make things work, and it, it just got heavier and heavier. I, I, I became so shitty to be around. Like my, my friends were just like, I could feel them pushing me away and just wanting to spend less time with me and, and me with them because I just felt crappy. Uh, my girlfriend broke up with me, which was crazy, um, but it, it, it was perfect and beautiful. And um, yeah, I ended, up, I, ended up getting, I ended up moving back home and living in, a, in my parents' basement. Wow. Well, how old are you at this point? Uh, 30. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So it was that- crazy. <laughs> so for, for the next two years, things just got real bad until I put on some headphones and, and just started. So I, I had done some personal development. This is the thing, right? I had done personal development work. I had hired the life coach, but the life coach was helping me to be, helping me to figure out why I wasn't doing well in my business. And we didn't get to the heart of the matter fast enough for things just to continue to spiral out of control. Plus, I wasn't really applying what she was teaching me. Mm. Number two, I had gone to the workshops and I was spouting all of these, you know, the affirmations and and all of the, the, these clever cliche quotes that we do. And, and, and I, I knew what to do, but again, was not literally applying it and living it. But what I recognize now, the biggest thing I recognize today is that I had these deep core patterns that were running subconsciously under the surface. So regardless of all of the cool shit and all the new tools that you pile onto, you know, your old broken system, it's only creating resistance. And so you have to work twice as hard for twice as long for those new habits to take over. Or what's easier is you eliminate the crap at the surface on a subconscious level. Then when you implement new stuff, it just takes. It's it, it, it's not so hard because the resistance isn't there because the old you's not. It's like it's like having an iPhone four that you never updated, and then you're trying to download apps that are four years advanced and really meant for your iPhone six S. Mm. Right, and so they're actually not even opening. They continue to crash. Because your, your, your subconscious operating system, is st- it's still crap. And because you don't even know what's operating on it, because it's completely unconscious to you, you don't do anything about it except add in these new tools, um, these new ways of, of – you know, these new habits and you know, cool tricks, but they don't take. 
uh, it's, it's like the two – this is why majority of people fail after going to the workshops. Things are great for about a week or they hire the coach and they still can't seem to figure it out because they're trying to add these new tools onto the old broken operating system. So when did it when did it all change for you then? So when you, when you became consciously aware that you know yeah. you, intellectually you perhaps knew what you needed to do, but sure. for whatever reason you weren't implementing, and you know you just, you'd got to that point where you'd spiraled and spiraled. When when yeah. did it, when did it change for you? And what 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 was it that caused that change? It all changed last week. It all ch- it all changed <laughs> last week after. Um, after f- having this massive epiphany, it changed another week prior to that after doing an amazing, uh, not prior, yeah, prior to that after doing an amazing medicine journey. And it, it changed before that when I met my twin flame and started a beautiful, a massively um, inspiring relationship with my twin flame. It changed before that when I when I got into a conscious community and moved to California. And, it, and so what, what I'm trying to express is that transformation is instant. Growth mm-hmm. is constant. It is always changing. And when I opened up to that reality and stopped waiting for the thing to come rescue me or the one fucking thing that was going to be the magic bullet to save me, that's when it changed. When I started applying actually the things that I was learning versus spouting them off, thinking that I, I knew something and got out of my head and ego and logical about it and got into my heart and the actual practice of it, that is when it friggin' changed. So so it's been it's been progressively getting massively better where you'd start having, you know, five figure months and actually doing what I love for a living and having clients get massive transformation and seeing being inspired and being inspiring and seeing the results of that, my life is magnificent. When it first really changed to kind of get more to the direct intention of your question, I think, was um Almost six years ago now when I was still in that basement and I recognized that I had learned a lot of great things but hadn't fully applied them as I said. And so what I did was I threw on all of these audiobooks and all the stuff that I had collected and listened to before but not really engaged with and I started running while listening to them. Turned off the music wasn't a runner still really am not but I, I was always very active and fit but um, I hadn't been for a little while and I started to remember, oh yeah, if I change my physiology, that'll help to start change my psychology. Mm -hmm. So I began to change my physiology. I began to sit upright and really get quiet and meditate, like really meditate. Not say that I was a meditator, which I only did once a month and it sounded like it made me cool and and wise and intelligent, but actually as a daily practice, sit quietly and meditate. I began running on a daily basis. Nothing crazy, just a flat run around the block, one to two miles a day. Eventually I got up to six and eventually ran a half marathon a few months later. But it was just one to two miles a day while listening to like Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, Jim Rohn, you know, the 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 the, the greats of the time. So then I started recognizing, oh, so it's really mainly been my my attitude and this expectation that I have that something is gonna come save me. Okay. Well let me just get back to work and, and and start doing what just feels good versus what I think I'm supposed to do. So I so I started shifting to well what feels good? Why, why do I like being a, a financial advisor? And I started like reverse engineering the things that I liked in my life. I liked self-expression. I liked connecting with people. I liked teaching and feeling like I was of value and support. You know, come to find out later from shamans and psychics, I am here to be a master teacher. At the time, I didn't know that. I just looked at me being a financial advisor and what did I like most about it? I liked filling out the questionnaire and asking people about their lives and giving them some support and guidance. Mm. Cool. Where else can I do that? Okay, so what, what other things do I like in my life? I am obsessed with reading spiritual books, personal development books, and business books. Oh, okay. That's a piece of the puzzle. I love self-expression and I love um, teaching and I love being on video and stage. There's a piece of the puzzle. So immediately, as I started to kind of reverse engineer what I enjoyed about my life and and how and the things that I, I I enjoyed about what I was doing or what I used to do, it all became very very clear that coaching and speaking were going to be massive components of what was next. Mm. And so I started 
running and implementing things that I was learning. I started meditating and getting quiet and being okay with my emotions. I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together and looking at my past and recognizing there was absolute freaking ladies and gentlemen listening there is you've never made a mistake in your life i want you to breathe and take that in i want you dan to breathe and take that in you've never ever made a mistake in your life ever when i look back and recognized that all the way back to my job at denny's was on purpose it offered a relationship a skill an opportunity. It prepared me for the very next perfect thing. When I recognized that, then all of a sudden my life made sense and I felt on purpose. And I didn't, the, the idea that I was lost in wandering, it became more clear that I wasn't. Mm-hmm. And that feeling of being on purpose is what most people are striving for. Absolutely. When they're tr- when when they're trying to get the external thing, they just want to feel connected to themselves. They want to feel love. They want to feel successful. They want to feel on purpose. They're looking for that feeling of fulfillment. And so when I recognized that everything I had done was perfectly preparing me for that moment in time as well as for the next and that there were m- no mistakes, then all of the pieces of the puzzle fell into place. And the next step just became clear. And then all, all I needed to do was just trust it and take that leap. And I did. And so I sold my book of business. Um, I, I joined a mastermind group that just, I don't believe in coincidences, but just magically came into my life at the perfect time. It was the perfect group. And in that mastermind, it became clear what the next step was. I started a video, uh, a blog, a vlog at the time. And sharing videos and content, and I made the transition to be a coach. Awesome. And what what have been your pr- proudest moments now as a coach? Uh, recently, actually, uh, obviously getting video testimonials. I, I did a I did a a group program uh, a, a year ago, and had my first like live ex- live experience with people. And those seven people got together after a 90 day online program. I had them all come together for uh, a one day event. And it was just amazing uh, to see their transformation, to get their testimonials, and also to, to take them through the experience of that day. So that's been one. Two um, would be recently, I had, a, I had a client that came to me a, a little over six months ago, who was in between careers, uh, wasn't sure what the next step in her life was going to be, didn't have a lot of money at all, was actually uh, just scraping by. She had some savings but was just scraping by paying her bills by doing some coaching at a CrossFit gym and was living. She was actually sleeping and living in that gym. She hired me. Yeah. And this is I want everyone listening to understand this. When you are aligned and are willing to trust what is in front of you – as being the answer for what your soul is calling out for. I get so many people who are like, I want the money, the fame, the success. I want the business. I want this. And then all of a sudden I show up as the coach, as the as the guide and the pathway to help them get that. And it's in front of them and they shut down and say no and their shit comes up and they're not willing to walk through that judgment, that fear, that anxiety, that stress in order to get to the other side and actually hire me or do the thing to have them get what they say they want. You know, like – once it shows up, you got to be a yes. You got to be a yes. You can't let shit stop you. And that's for all this, for all of our faults, if you can do that, um, you're going to be much better off. So that's, even though she was in a very challenging position, she was at least able to trust that and be a yes to what showed up. Uh, we started working together and less than, less than really, I think less, if it was uh, like three months later, she bought the gym she was sleeping in. And she since had increased the revenue, strengthened the culture, um, and is is just growing the gym, instituting new programs that she's always been inspired to do, and is just kicking ass, tr- kicking ass. And it's not that she doesn't have her days, but she's kicking ass. And so one of my proudest moments was when someone who was living in a gym that then bought the gym that is now growing the gym sent me a hoodie from her gym. Nice. And so when I wear that hoodie, it's like it's that is friggin' what I live for. Shit like that. Full circle. Nice. I yeah. Like that. 
Yeah, amazing. And then the relationship that I'm in now. I mean, it, it's it, it was the one missing component at the time was being in just a powerful, supportive, beautiful, conscious relationship. After all of the work that I had been doing for the last four to five years, finding myself in a beautiful, conscious, magnificent community of friends, um, putting my, my gifts and talents out there increasingly and getting more to my authentic self and, and sharing and doing what I do in a unique manner that is me and getting my health online. All of it was falling into place and the one thing that I was desiring, I am perfect, whole, and complete as I am. Always will be. Do not need anyone or anything outside of myself for that. And when you when I when I looked at what my ideal life would look like, if you're choosing from the ideal, which I inspire everyone to do and encourage everyone to do, it it had a perfect, beautiful, supportive, magnificent relationship in it. And um, that would be a, another amazing moment when I showed up as the man who could uh, be ready for that and and receive that. I'd like to explore that a bit more. I mean, that's something I've had experience of in my own life. And there was a time I came out of a, uh, I went through a bad breakup, perhaps in 2009, I think it was. Okay. And for, for a while after that, I, you know, I, I, I questioned myself, you know, I thought, what did I do that led to that, that mm -hmm. outcome? And, you know, who, who do I need to be to avoid that happening again? And it, it always, it was about a, a lack of value in myself. And it was, mm -hmm. That that was the beginning, but one of the earliest parts of the beginnings of my own own personal development journeys, and it wasn't until the point where I felt full in myself and complete in myself that I found a true relationship following that point. Mm -hmm. And I think that is so so important. You know, people I've had the countless times you hear people say, "I need to find my partner to complete me." Mm -hmm. you, you're you're never going to find it that way. You have to be complete in yourself, and it, it's just it's just amazing to hear another story of someone who feels that way and that they're complete and whole in themselves and then they find someone else uh, to partner with. And it's, it's, it's a whole different experience when you come from a place I'm full, I am complete. And totally. Let's, let's be complete and full together, you know? Totally, <laughs> totally. And who shows up? Um, you know, I did a video recently about the number one transformational, uh, you know, growth process out there. And for me, that's being in conscious. So I had someone to say, you know, I, I was like, it's being in conscious relationship. And I did this seven minute video of why, of why conscious relationship which is very unique and different from the, your average relationship. But conscious relationship, I think, is the number one um, path to transformation. I had someone also say it's really any relationship, but still one party has to be alert to that for them to see what they're learning and growing. So I still argue that it's conscious relationship. But <laughs> so – but yeah, it's it's uh, it is it's very different from what I understood relationship to be in the past. You know, for me and my partner, our number one focus – is growth and transformation and being the best versions of ourselves. And we understand that the relationship um, is a vehicle for that, as well as this beautiful connection with each other and opportunity to support each other and and to to play and experience this magnificent life together. And it's a, and so our number one commitment is to the relationship, and one of our number one core values in the relationship is growth. Awesome! I really want to, I really want to explore this area. So, you know, we 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 um we kind of brought up to believe that you cannot have it all. Uh, you sure. always, you know you grow up and it's you go to the shop and your mom or dad is like you can have that or that, and it's it's right. always been like an A B distinction. And, you know, other people's beliefs about business and being successful and having to make sacrifices, all this language of sacrifice, I see it everywhere. Mm. And it's, if you, if you take that to be the truth, then it becomes your reality. And I, I was one of those people who believed that if I'm going to find greatness in my business, in my mission, then something has to be sacrificed. But then more recently, <laughs> I felt that it's the polar opposite. In fact, I, I'm, I'm beginning to believe that it's all a lie. And in fact, the, the, hi <laughs> the hierarchy is the other way around. If you put mm -hmm. yourself first and grow yourself to ensure that you are thriving and then your relationships and your health, the business and the mission just is enhanced at a whole new level. So I'd be really mm -hmm. in, in, I'm really intrigued and interested to hear your perspectives on finding greatness in business, but also mm -hmm. 
at the same level, finding greatness in your relationships. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, you touched on a very key point in, in terms of most of our experiences is that it's it's an either or scenario. And and it's I do believe it's because so few of us have examples to the contrary. You know, it's it's like what what is it that we're really learning, and we're learning from our conditioning and from those that are in our life experience, and it's so few, so rare that we do get to encounter anyone who quote unquote has it all. You know, but then it also it also determines what our perception and definition of it all means. Um, you know, if if you're someone who is is awakening. And conscious, and you understand that having it all is so much more than the external. Then you recognize that, yeah, you you really get to work on yourself and get to a place of deep self love and amazing self esteem to feel that you are worthy and deserving of having it all. And then from there, the experience of having it all becomes possible. So, you know, I work with a lot of people who have all these great goals and intentions. And yet what I tell them is like the goal is not the actual goal. If you tell me that the goal is to make six figures this year or to take your, you know, your business to the next level or attract the relationship. But then when we do muscle testing or we do we do an exercise to uncover your level of belief on a scale from one to ten of how much you actually believe you can accomplish that thing or have that you know external experience on a scale of one to ten how quickly could you have it in the next six months and you tell me you're a five well then the goal is not the goal the goal is not getting the woman or the or the or the business or changing the career the goal is getting you to believe you actually one can do it and two deserve it then we can actually focus on whatever the freaking goal is mm-hmm. Uh, until then, you're just going to continue to be operating at a level from a place of a lack of belief. So no matter what I give you to implement, you'll never actually fully implement it. You're spot and, on so, it. And, so, and so the thing will always fail. Th- that's why the, internet's f- the internet is – Google and YouTube will give you every fucking how-to in the book. You don't need anyone for how to, and yet the biggest programs that sell is how to do this, six steps to how to do that. Who gives a shit? I, you can YouTube how to do anything. You can put up sheetrock to get enlightenment on YouTube, okay? But the how is not the issue. It's it's the who. Who you're being is the issue. So if, you, if you're not someone who actually believes that it's possible or you have your old patterns and beliefs that are still running that old operating system underneath that says you don't deserve it or that you're not good enough or smart enough, then the how is going to – it'll forever be irrelevant, forever be irre- irrelevant. So the point that I'm getting at is you saw that um, I had done the Ultimate Life Summit, right? I had done this amazing summit, had these – powerful speakers on, like 22 different magnificent speakers talking about what it means to truly have it all. Because my experience was I either met people, as you're speaking into, who had great businesses, very financially successful, everything looked great on the outside, but who they were being was kind of, you could, I've always had, personally, I'll just speak for myself, I've always had a pretty good radar for whether or not people were showing up clear or authentic or if they were just needy or if they were you know, pushy, even those who thought they were hiding it well. I could <laughs> usually see through the veil pretty well. And so – um, I could tell, like you know, I knew that they had you know crappy relationships, or that they were lonely, or that they were miserable, or working twice as hard as that they needed to, and that they but they had the external thing. And then I met people who were being wonderful, just sweet, awesome people. You know, they om and namaste all friggin' day long, and had you know people thought they were amazing and wonderful, and they seemed to have peace in their life. Yet internally, there was a struggle. That they were uh, not experiencing a life of abundance and they were needing to sacrifice and they weren't financially successful. So it's always been this either or and it wasn't until I started really stepping into being the full expression of myself and kind of attracted and created this life around me that I started to actually meet people who had 
beautiful relationships, this harmony in their life. I don't believe in balance, but I believe in harmony. They had relationships that were serving their their business and businesses that were serving their relationships. And they, they weren't sacrificing and things were only getting better. And when I actually saw that, I was like, Wow, so it's possible. So how many people, how many of these people that I have as examples in my life can I get onto one summit? And just doing those interviews and hearing what people shared, it transformed me. It, it deepened my level of belief that it was possible. And what I recognized is, is there's this harmony between being and doing. There's a harmony between the masculine and the feminine energies inside of us. There's a harmony between... Um, you know, uh, structure and just creativity and flow. And I've recognized now that the being and the being in the creativity and flow and the allowing things that happen is, is where we get to put most of our energy and attention. They're e- the, 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 where, they're, where it seems like there's bad math is they're equally important and yet where you get to put 90% of your energy and attention is on the being in the flow. It's being. It's, it's doing what feels good. And then the actual doing, the what to do, the how to, that becomes informed. It's just clear. It shows up. You feel it in your body. The right person shows up. The opportunities unfold and all you need to do is take inspired action from that point. But the thing to take inspired action on just shows up naturally when you're clear about who you're being and focused on feeling good in the moment and doing things that inspire you and living from choice versus obligation. Awesome. Ed, so, so it's helped illustrate that point then. Can you can you share some experiences or stories from your life where you discovered the being who you were supposed to be you know what what things took you from the external to discovering the being who you want to be and how you want to show up in this world Mm, thank you yeah there was one so when i when i first there's a couple couple of stories when i first started making this transition i I mentioned earlier that i I was fortunate to be inside of this uh, amazing mastermind and it was like six or seven of us meeting at a friend's house and we would meet each week and we would talk about what our our goals and intentions were and do round table and support one another and there was a a variety of different types of um, business owners there was a coach in there at the time who had been farther along in in being a coach than i was is just kind of entering the the source that the 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 career there was um, a couple of realtors and and you know an NLP expert and so forth and so during this process I think it was probably like a two a good two months in and I was sharing and trying to offer value and content to someone and I ended up quoting Tony Robbins and this person seeing what I was transitioning into and being able to even see it better than I could at the time. And recognizing the value that I had to offer, looked at me and said, you know, that's great, Dallas. I'm really curious, though. When are you going to quote yourself? Mm, And it was this beautiful slap in the face because what what I was unaware of, and and it didn't completely change overnight. I just continued to incorporate more of me in my work as time went on, I felt more, it's really about a, um, a level of self-love and self-trust. Because if you don't really, if you're not really clear about um, that people are still going to show up, you know, like we, we think we can't fully be ourselves because then we'll, the clients won't show up or they won't like us. My, my clients know, I swear. My clients, <laughs> my clients know that I'm going to give them a hug and then probably kick them in the ass. You know, my, my clients appreciate the authenticity and the level that I play at. My clients appreciate that if we're on a video call, I might look sweaty from the gym. I'm not going to be wearing a, a, a you know, a, a button up shirt and you know, I, have, I, I can totally dress to the nines. I love doing it. And, and, and yet that's, that's not the first thought in my head. My clients know that I'm, I'm going to, um, even when it's uncomfortable, I'm going to continue to hold them to the epic divine beings that I know that they are. So, but in the beginning, I didn't trust that. I, I thought if I, didn't, if, I, if, if I showed up a certain way, I'd scare people away and, or they wouldn't appreciate me or I wouldn't be professional. 
right? Especially coming out of seven years of being a financial advisor and taking the earrings out of my ears and unbraiding my hair from when I was a, <laughs> you know, break dancing and doing hip hop to putting on a suit. Um, so I kind of forgot how to be me. When this person reminded me that the most important thing I could do was be me, to quote myself. Like be be the Tony – be you. Don't worry about Tony Robbins. Mm. It, it's fine to be inspired by those people but it, and, and to, to maybe look at their systems and what have worked. And yet too many of us unknowingly are just – we're just carbon copies. Even if we – you know, I, I know people who will defend it to their death that that's not the case because ego wants to protect. And really they're just – they're just – they're showing up as everyone else. I mean it's like – it, it's there's so many coaches nowadays and so many of them are just saying the same old shit and so this person just so beautifully and in a supportive way as i'm sharing something that i i'm just totally in it i'm feeling good about what i'm saying it, it's cl- i feel like it's clever and smart and then they say that and it was such a pattern interrupt it stopped me dead in my tracks i was like oh yeah what's my voice you know, and that that was one of my favorite times that, that 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 happened. That began the process of becoming more authentically me. And now, you know, I do spoken word poetry, and it's amazing because I'll share content videos, and I'll get great responses from the videos of content that I share. People will appreciate it. I get great comments. Um, it's amazing value, and it's raw and authentic, and and they're great videos. And where I get the most engagement is when I do a four minute spoken word poem and people see the videos and they're just, you know, they're, they're blown away and then, then they want to know more about me and then they end up coaching with me. So it's really interesting how it happens, but the more authentically me I am, the more, so a quote that I have is that the, the world will accept you wholly to the degree that you accept yourself. The world will accept you wholly to the degree to which you accept yourself. Powerful. And the, the, the more I step in and own that, the the more magical my life becomes. Because you are magic. We forget that. You are magic. It's that simple. That's an amazing story to to give context to uh, to what we what we were talking about. And mm. again, it's just taken me on a journey because there's there's so many things from our early life that influence the way we're shaped in our mm-hmm. later life. And often we dwell upon the things that perhaps have negatively shaped us when it's particularly on the journey and you look at how belief systems have been ingrained that have perhaps held us back. We're always looking for what's held us back and how do we, how do we, how do we shift those limiting beliefs? But often it's good to go back and look at the things that have actually shaped us positively as well. And just listening to you to speak about being authentic to yourself. Recently I did a, a process on myself. I just decided to, to try this out and I went back at different five-year intervals in my mind to uh, see the different versions of me as I was growing up. And I was asking myself the question, who did you want to be when you grew up at age 21, at at age 16, at age 11, at age five? And all these other questions came out. And it was just amazing to look at the journey I've been on and things, just things like being a 16-year-old kid who was into like punk rock and heavy metal and dyeing his hair blue and having this anarchic energy within me, this like free-spirited animal who had just transcended from this really quiet 11 year old boy who was intimidated by the world into this blooming creature and then going into university and have that expand even more but then going into the corporate world and having all of that neck like the uh, uh oppressive nature of corporate and you can look at anything in two different ways and again using the same context of the conversation i just said but the thing is about the what, where, the way I say it's oppressive is that there's certain paradigms and belief systems that are institutionalized, which then force you to conform with those inst- institutionalized paradigms. So, you know, rocking up in a, a suit. And again, like yourself, I love dressing up. I love dressing smart. I love rocking an amazing suit. I'm in the market for a brand new suit right now to look sharp. But I freaking love just having my rock and roll lifestyle and being the kid who is 16 years old again. And one of the th- things that has come to me over the last few weeks is I've started listening to all the music I listened to when I was 16 years old and watching the films like Wayne's world. when I grew up as like such a pivotal film in my life, you know, Mike Myers and all these influences that I'd kind of parked because I had to have this corporate world. And I even listened to myself on this podcast and I still hear the corporate Dan. And again, there's no negative to that, but the, the, the authenticity is now coming through of the freer Dan and, that concern that, that you can put on yourself. And this is a concern I've been having, and it's something that I'm eliminating. 
I think that if I show up fully in myself, I'm going to freak people out. But actually, I'll only freak out the people <laughs> that were never meant to work with me anyway. Whereas if I show up, I just did a webinar and I was like full out the entire webinar. I, I, I had to lie down afterwards. I was, I was so tired. I just gave it everything. That was full down. And I was like, that's how I need to show up. And if people listen to that webinar and think that guy's nuts, great, go away. <laughs> you're not my people. Whereas you come to the webinar and you're like, damn, this guy is on fire. He's passionate. He's explosive. That's fine. That's me. And I think, you know, just listening to you speak, it's, you know, I'm taking a lot on board from what you said. And um, it's, it's a really powerful conversation. And I, and I want this conversation between you and I, Dallas, to be that jolt to someone else to think if they're in that warp, you know, we talked about the warp earlier on to take a, take a, take a step out of that warp and have a look at what are they doing? What are they passionate about? And go through that reverse engineering process you talked about and ask themselves, are you expressing yourself as truly who you are at the being rather than the, all the titles and things that you have on your business card? So I want to thank you and honor you for, for, for some, some really insightful um, conversation. I'll emphasize the point right here is that what you were just sharing, I think, really highlights what I was saying in the beginning, that there are just zero mistakes in our life because – you're you're beautifully going back to what made you you and what was so perfect and beautiful about you naturally and organically from your youth and then you're saying and i can still hear some of that corporate me and that's okay exactly that is okay because there is a time to be professional and to bring that in and to make it work with the original authentic person that you were and it's now just more of who you are authentically that's why there's just no mistakes. I see so many people discount their past or say, I got off my path or I was on the wrong path or I, I've spent so much time making mistakes because I was hurting this person or doing drugs. I don't care if you were a heroin addict living under a friggin' bridge. There's no mistakes, period. And helping people to understand that and see that every single challenge in their life has been actually their greatest gift is really what I'm, I'm good at on top of helping people find their divine purpose. So let's move from there into the final round. Dallas, it's been some amazing conversation today on today's show. And hopefully the listeners have really internalized a lot of the things we've we've talked about today. But to wrap it up, I've got three final questions for you to finish the show today. My first question to you, which is going to be an interesting question to hear your response, given everything we've talked about, how <laughs> life is life, life, nothing in life is a mistake. Uh, given that the question is, uh, if you had to start from scratch, knowing everything that you know now, what advice would you give to your younger self? A few things. One, don't take it all so seriously. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm someone who believes that this whole transformational, personal development, being the best you, uh, having a successful business, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for all of that being actually fun and easy. And it being light and it literally being fun, that the journey being more enjoyable and more exciting than any of the momentary achievements that you are now striving for, that the actual journey in between the process of it be more fun than anything else, that you really, really like stop taking yourself so friggin' seriously, like laugh at yourself. Because I end up, I, early on, I, it would get so heavy and so stressful for me and I would take it so serious. I wouldn't be much fun to be around. I'd make things much harder than they needed to be. Um, I, got, I would get into perfectionist mode and put out less, you know, less value and less content because it wasn't perfect enough. I'd judge whether or not people liked it. I mean, all of this piled on top. It's like trying to run a marathon in you know, a lane filled with mud carrying a suitcase of bricks. So I'd say, one, just don't take yourself so damn seriously. Like this, this gets to be fun. Just have a blast with it. Laugh at yourself. It's not, a, it's not that big of a deal. No one gets out alive anyway. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> um, just, I just want to touch on one point there before we ask the next question around perfectionism. This is something, again, talking about nothing being a mistake. Uh, I, I was asked this morning by my coach, um, am I on track for this year? And what would I do differently if I could go back and do things differently? Um, and I said perf perf the word perfectionist came up. Um, mm. But again, if you frame, if you look at, say, someone like Steve Jobs, would you call his work perfectionism to create what he created with the iPhone or did he just have high standards? And mm, I think nice. perfectionism is another word that's banded around as a, 
as a negative word, but, but it's just really the meaning you give it. If you, if, you know, perfection is a standard that perhaps doesn't exist, but if, if there's a word closer to perfectionism that embodies high standards mm -hmm. and knowing what you want to create and making it the way you see it, you know, like a Picasso sees the canvas before he creates it. That's yeah. not perfectionism. That's a standard of a vision that you want to achieve. And there's a different, I'm beginning to learn there's a difference between perfectionism and that level of standard. I just wanted to touch on that. Mm, I like that. Yeah. If you, if you have an ideal and you can hold yourself to that vision and that ideal and it drives you. So the, the, where, where I see it going wrong for people and they're getting trapped in this perfection, it's really because they're either scared to fail or scared to be judged or, or they're coming from a place of I'm not enough or I'm not good enough or it's it's not enough. Mm. And so what that does is it keeps them from producing. That's the difference. They, they yeah. produce slower and less. If it's a vision that it drives you and inspires you and you hold yourself to a higher standard and it, it, it causes you to produce, we're not talking about the same thing. That's yes. the difference. Exactly. I agree. Yeah, I think that I think it comes from creative energy rather than fear energy when you're doing it for, exactly. for, for an idea. Bingo. Cool. And the second question is, what is the most game changing piece of advice that you've ever received and then implemented? Uh, quoting yourself, you know, we see so many people out there even now, all the coaches just re-quoting and retweeting other people's memes and, and promoting other people's stuff, which is great. There's, there are moments when I'll do it. I don't think I'm the only one in my only voice. In fact, in my coaching itself, I do incorporate other people's programs and give people credit. Um, but really owning my authentic voice, like being showing up as you you know as i mentioned i started doing spoken word poetry and i get off the stage and people are more excited about that than anything else that i've said and it blows me away because it's just uh, it's a it's me performing and just having fun and it ends up being what inspires people the most is when i'm the most myself and authentic it, your tribe shows up so just be you period heck yes i love that and the final question is what does it mean to be unstoppable to you what does it mean to be unstoppable? I can go into so many different directions in that. For me, being unstoppable is two things. It's having an unshakable trust in myself that there's nothing in my experience or journey that I can't figure out or that isn't that everything in my life is there to serve me it is for my highest transformation it's for me nothing's happening to me and because of that then i can fully trust myself in my life and also being able to be quiet and let source and god and, and the universe operate through me me being a conduit for what's supposed to happen here versus thinking that I'm driving the bus and letting ego drive the bus. So I'm not here making it happen. I'm here being a conduit of love and creativity and I'm allowing it to happen. I'm allowing source to operate through me. And so I become a channel um, versus having to make it happen coming from a place of being versus doing from allowing versus making one has weight to it and the other one feels much lighter for me so that allows me to be unstoppable because i remember that it's not about me and i get quiet and i allow myself to be informed by what's next the more that i can do that then the more synchronistic my life is the more it it aligns and unfolds with ease and grace if i do that and then continue to trust myself and my abilities and know that everything that's showing up is showing up um for me and i'm fully capable of handling whatever it is and figuring it out then it's easy to be unstoppable because it i'm just clear that my life is unfolding perfectly for me and i get to enjoy the ride amazing dallas michael sir you are unstoppable how can the crowd who listen today find out more about your work and get in touch with you yeah two things i mean you mentioned i so i mentioned the ultimate love summit it's still out there if you go to the ultimate love summit.com you can purchase it it was massively transformational it's badass it's ridiculously affordable um some of the, the interviews are insane the content's insane and then if you just want something free and you just want to follow me and, and be connected to me and my videos and learn more about what i'm up to and and um it, you know if i'm a good voice for you and, and can serve you in some way just go to uh um, www.adversity 
to, the word to, T-O, abundance, adversity to abundance.com. And there's something awesome and paradigm shifting there for you for free. Amazing. Amazing. Dallas, thank you for your wisdom, your insight, and being yeah. open and sharing everything about your being today. I've really appreciated your time on the show, and I cannot wait to share your episode. Thank you yeah. for unleashing today on the Unstoppable Podcast. Uh, it's been my pleasure. Dan, I love you. Everyone listening, I genuinely love you. Spread more love in the world, and thank you very much for having me on, man. It was an honor and a pleasure to host Dallas on the show today, and there are so many great lessons that I've personally taken from the show, and I'll be sharing my full debrief of the episode on Monday's show and outlining how I'll be implementing today's lessons into my own life and recommending how you can do the same. As always, the discussion continues after the show within the Unstoppable Mastermind on Facebook and on the blog, so head over to danjgregory.com forward slash 40 for the show notes. If you're listening on a mobile device, you should be able to find the link to the show notes within the episode description. The Unstoppable Mastermind Group is brand new, and I'm looking for it to become a hub for those who want to unleash their greatness and build their empire. It's early days yet, but with your help, I want to kickstart an amazing supportive group with an amazing vibe. So please head on over www.danjgregory.com forward slash 40, and on the website there, you'll find a link to the Unstoppable Mastermind too. I'm also at the point where I need some help with the podcast. I'm actively looking for some volunteers. So if you want to know what happens behind the scenes or perhaps you're thinking about starting your own podcast and you want to learn the ropes, then please email me at theboss at danjgregory.com. That's theboss at danjgregory.com. And when I say Dan J. Gregory, that's literally D-A-N-J-Gregory.com. I use my middle initial because someone else had already had dangregory.com. It's just the little J in the middle. It's not like a strange name dan j is dan j gregory.com clear up any confusion the last thing i will say today is congratulations to the england football team for winning against wales today passion and persistence pays off but i'll be cheering on both teams in the next game and would love to see both england and wales in the next round of the european championships on that note don't forget to tune in on monday for the full debrief and the latest unstoppable insights you've been amazing for now it's time to unleash your greatness Build your empire, make your impact, and live your ultimate life. You are unstoppable.